Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. It's a far cry from a desert island in the South Atlantic to a police-besieged apartment in a modern American city. But you're about to hear a man who has bridged it. A man who also has come full cycle from his first love radio back to the microphone as a star in suspense. He is Dan O'Herlihy, whom you will remember as the bearded, lonely, and silent Robinson Crusoe from the picture of the same name a few seasons back. In that delightful film, Mr. O'Herlihy spoke only 90 lines of dialogue. In the play you are about to hear, he has considerably more words to say. Listen, listen then, as Dan O'Herlihy stars in Strange for a Killer, which begins in just a moment. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Overhead, the moon is beaming. Hold it, Daphne, hold it. Oh, hi, Joe. Guess what, honey? I'm trying out for the operetta. As what? A singer. You could have fooled me. I was just practicing one of the songs. Well, I don't think you quite fit the role. Why not? Well, if this version of the student prince is like the version I know, that particular number is sung by a tenor. Oh. Not that you don't come close, but I think you better stick to being a housewife. But I want to be a singer. Daphne, honey, a singer you'll never be. I could take lessons. Yeah, but lessons cost money. Money better invested for us in savings bonds. You and your old savings bonds. I can't help it, honey. I just can't get over the way those savings bonds pay off. Four dollars for every three. That's what I call an investment. What good do they do me now? A lot. The money we put in those bonds every payday helps keep America strong and protects you and me. No bonds, maybe no operetta. Ever think of that? I still want to be a singer. Well, when those bonds start bringing in the green, if you still want to sing, they'll pay for the lessons and more. Good. Gee, if those bonds mature as fast as you say, I better start practicing now just so that I'll be ready. Overhead, the moon is beaming. Daphne, Daphne, did anyone ever tell you you have a bad voice? Everyone. And now, Strange for a Killer, starring Dan O'Herlihy. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. All right, mister, this is as far as you go. Why? What's the matter, officer? What's wrong? You'll have to park here for a while. The street's closed. But I live on this street. I've got to get home. My wife's waiting for me. She just had a baby. And... Well, you'll be a little late. Now, just a minute. Look, will you keep your voice down? Oh, what is this? A stakeout? Yeah. Who are you after? Roy Jaleska. Jaleska? That guy who's wanted for murder? That's right. Where's he hiding? Down the street, three doors. There's a cop every ten feet from here to the river. You better go into the drugstore and wait. You can call your wife if you want. Oh, I think I'd better. Where'd you say he was? That boarding house across the street and down three doors. We live in the apartment house right next to it. You don't think there'll be any shooting? Just tell your wife to stay inside and keep her door locked. She'll be all right. Thanks. Funny. She's got to be home. What's the matter, honey? I thought you weren't going to answer. I, um... I was looking after Johnny. He okay? Yes. Just getting hungry. Well, go ahead and feed him. I'm going to be late. Oh? I don't want to scare you, Jess, but there's going to be a little trouble next door. I don't want you to leave the apartment. Trouble? The police are after someone who's been hiding out in the boarding house next to us. The whole block is surrounded, and I won't be able to get home till it's over. And remember... You're not to come out. Uh, all right. There's nothing to be afraid of, Jesse. Just stay inside and keep the door locked. There's no need for that now. Goodbye, dear. What? Jesse. Hello, hello, Jesse. I tell you, Sergeant, I'm positive there's something wrong up there in my apartment. 
Well, what makes you so sure? Well, my wife was afraid of something. I know she was. Something right there in the room with her. I didn't realize how different she sounded until I hung up. You say you live next door to the boarding house? Yes, the apartment house next door on the third floor. I'm sure he's in there with her. He could be anywhere now. We've hit the boarding house and he wasn't in his room. I knew it. He went across the roof. He's with Jesse and my son. Now, don't go jumping at any conclusions. Our apartment is on the top floor. He could get in easy enough. Uh, maybe. Let me go up there, Sergeant. Please let me go up there. I've got to be with my wife and baby. What good would that do? We're not even sure he's there. I'll make sure. Look. Look, if everything's all right, if he isn't there, I'll call the drugstore and have them tell you so. If he is, I'll... Well, I'll let you know somehow we can think of some kind of signal. All right. Now, listen to me. Yes. Go straight to your wife. If you pass anyone you don't know on the stairs or in the halls, keep going and don't look back. He's trapped and he's scared now, and he'll kill you if he thinks you're onto him. I realize that. If he's not in your place when you get there, call the drugstore. If he is there, well, there's nothing I can tell you. You'll be on your own. But don't try to signal. You wouldn't get away with it, and it's not necessary. If I don't get your call ten minutes after you go in, we'll know. Yes, sir. Remember this, mister. If he's there, don't try to be a hero. Just do whatever he tells you. Keep a good distance from him and don't make any quick moves. He's been in spots like this before and he'll know what it means. I know. That's about all, I guess. Just be careful. We want this man. We want him bad. But we don't want anyone hurt getting him if we can help it. You understand? I understand. And thanks. Okay, mister. You can get going. Jesse! Jesse, it's me! Jess! Honey, is everything okay? Come in, Henry. Get your hands over your head, get up against the wall, and don't make any noise or I'll kill you. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. Memo on medals. Interesting information about our military awards and decorations. Campaign medals were authorized by Congress in 1905 for all officers and men engaged in specified wars and military action, including such widely divergent battles as the Civil War in the United States and the Boxer Rebellion in China. The Navy and Marine Corps have a special Manila Bay Medal for members of the United States Asiatic Squadron under command of Commodore George Dewey in May of 1898. The Haitian campaign of 1915 is commemorated with a medal, as is the Santo Domingo expedition, which suppressed a revolt in that country and preserved order during elections in 1916. The Army has its Mexican Service Medal for those involved in any of several expeditions or engagements from April 12, 1911 through June 16, 1919. There is also the Army of Cuban Pacification Medal for United States troops who, from October of 1906 to April of 1909, helped establish a stable government in that island nation. The Victory Medal was initially awarded to all United States service personnel in World War I expeditionary forces, including, for the first time, women serving in the military units. There is a story behind every American medal, a proud story of devotion to country and unselfish service to keep it strong and free. And now, starring Dan O'Hurley, Act Two of Strange for a Killer. <laughs> Try anything, mister. I'm not afraid of your gun. That's because you've never been hit by a 45. I'm warning you. You won't never know what it means to wish you could die till you get a 45 slug in the stomach. Henry. Don't worry, Jesse. I know he means it. I mean it. It won't do any good, you know. No matter what happens to us, no matter how long you stay here, 
They'll get you. Listen, they're guys just like me. Those blue suits don't make them Superman. They make mistakes like everyone else. They already made a big one. What? They shouldn't have sent you. <laughs> Nobody sent me. My, my wife didn't sound right when I spoke to her over the phone. I came up to find out why. Yeah, she gave it away. She's sorry about that. Jesse, did... It's all right, Henry. Please, it, it's all right. Did he hurt you, Jess? Never mind that. She just got out of the hospital. Would you like to see her go back? I hope they kill you. They might. I thought about it. I guess maybe you better start thinking about it, too. It'll happen next time you make a crack like that. Henry, don't. Don't. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You're going to give me the right answers. The right answers, mister. The first time or you'll get hurt bad. What do you want to know? Where were you when you made that phone call? Drugstore. At the corner. And your wife don't sound right, you think maybe something's wrong? Yes. You want to get up there, you want to find out why? Yes. What takes you so long? What? We don't hear you coming up the stairs till almost ten minutes after she hangs up. What are you doing all that time? Well, <laughs> you see, at first I wasn't sure she sounded like, like there was something wrong. It was only after I hung up and got to thinking about it that I started to worry. And, and then I made up my mind to come up. You don't stop to talk it over with the cops? Oh, why should I? How could I know it was you in here? Cops all over the block looking for me, searching every building. Streets probably closed off, and your wife sounds scared over the phone. She don't say why. Sounds like someone's with her, and she don't say who. And you don't think it might be me? Well, yes. Maybe. You don't say nothing to the cops, though? No. You just come up all by yourself? Yes. You're sure of that? Yes. Okay. No, no! Uh, Henry, Henry! Oh, Henry. It's all right. I'm all right, Jess. What do you think I am? There's a line of cops five feet thick around every building in the block, and no one gets through unless they let them. You're here because they put you here. I'm giving you just five seconds to tell me why. What's the big plan? He's hurt. Can't you see you've hurt him? I don't know about that plan. I don't know what they're going to do. But they know you're in here. Go on. I did go to the police when I thought you were here with my wife. I don't think they believed me at first. But I talked them into letting me come anyway. If you weren't here, I was supposed to call them right away. And if I was? Nothing. Just wait. And if they didn't hear in ten minutes... It meant... It meant I couldn't call. That you were... That you were in this room. What time is it? Too late. Much too late. They know, Jaleska. They've stopped searching. They know you're here. You haven't got a chance. I got a chance. As long as I ain't alone, I got a chance. You, lady. Go get that kid. No. Why do you want him? We'll do anything you say. <laughs> you look okay. You don't want to hurt the kid. Nothing will happen if you do like I tell you. Get him, lady. All right, Jesse. Henry. It's all right. I'm sure of it. You haven't got much time, Jaleska. You know it. Killing our baby is something you wouldn't do. You can bring him in, Jesse. If you say so. You're so sure this is the end of the line for me. And those cops down there, they're so sure. Well, I'm telling you, I got lots of time. And you're going to help me take it. Yeah? That's right. Now back up to the wall and peel off that jacket. What? You heard me. Take off the jacket. And throw it on the floor. Sure. All right. What are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything. You're going to take it for a while. Well, what do you mean? You don't get it, eh? I'm kind of surprised. I, I don't see any way out for you, if that's what you mean. They know you're here. Yeah, they know I'm here. You made sure of that, didn't you? So they're covering every way out. Doors, windows, alleys. What do you suppose would happen if I tried one of them? They'd probably kill you. Yeah. I start out that window and every cop comes running to the bottom of the fire escape to see I don't finish the trip. There won't be any cops anywhere else, see? In the alleys or on the streets or down near the river. 
They'll all be watching the guy on the fire escape, won't they? And the guy on the fire escape, uh, he don't need to be me, does he? It won't work. You're crazy to think that'll work. I got to take that chance now. You're going out that window, mister, and you're going to take your time doing it. They've seen me. They know what I look like. They saw a guy in a leather jacket right close up. Now you're a guy in a white T-shirt, three stories over the street coming on a fire escape. That makes you a different guy. That makes you Roy Jaleska. Well, what if they start shooting? The minute I step out in that window... What if they do? It's a chance you've got to take. You don't want me to take all the chances, do you? Ah, a little guy. All right, bring him in. He's asleep. You... He's asleep. What's his name? Johnny. Johnny, eh? That's a nice original name. You little kid, too. I uh, don't guess you'll put up any arguments, will you, mister? No. No arguments. And I'll be right here with your wife and kid till I see our little scheme's working, so don't try no tricks on the way down. I won't. What does he mean? Henry, what are you going to do? You can read about it in the papers, lady. Now go turn out the light. The light? Turn it out. But don't try nothing, neither one of you. You got your kid in here now, and there's no telling who'll get hit if I had to shoot wild. Turn it out, Jesse. Henry, the I... The lights, come on. Now, you, the window. Okay, they're all waiting. Get going. You can't let him go out there. They'll think he's you. They'll kill him. I stepped out onto the slatted platform and started toward the flimsy iron ladder. The cops had seen the light go out and I could hear quick moving in the street. I could feel every eye focused on me. Jaleska was right. It was going to work. All right, hold up there. We see you. Don't take another step. And then I discovered there was a part of the plan Jaleska hadn't told me. The part that would guarantee his escape. From the window behind me, he fired down into the police. Their guns flew up automatically, and every one was aimed at me. In a moment, we continue with the third act of... Suspense. We have together... Ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Positive results have been achieved through NATO since its formal inception in April 1949. The alliance has fulfilled its primary objectives. Preservation of peace and security and the halting of communist expansion westward. Not one square inch of European territory has fallen under Soviet domination since the signing of the alliance treaty. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring Dan O'Herlihy, Act Three of Strange for a Killer. Don't touch him. Let him alone. He's losing blood. I've got to have a doctor. You'll get a doctor, lady. Why don't you go? What are you waiting for? Haven't you done enough? He's been shot. He's hurt, and you stand there. I thought you wanted to get out. Well, get out now. Get out! Jesse. Henry. Henry, you'll be all right. Don't try to move, darling. You'll be all right. Is he gone? No, mister. I ain't gone. A little scheme. Don't look like it's gonna work coming up the stairs right now. Don't move, Henry. Be over in a minute. You're glad, huh? No. I'm not glad. I feel sorry for you. Don't. I've been running a long time. I think it'll feel good to stop. Funny. When they're after you and you're running away, you look the same, you act the same as you always did, but it's different on the inside. You're all tight and twisted. No matter what you're doing, you can't relax. You can't get a good deep breath. Yeah, I think I'm almost glad. Come on out, Jalesker. Those guys are going to do a lot of bragging tomorrow. I know you're in there. 
Come out with your hands up or we're coming in after you. And they finally get me, Jaleska, the guy they're all afraid of. You killed a man. Yeah, I killed a guy. I got mad, real mad. Things happen when you get that way. Things you can't stop. When it's over, no matter how it happened, you're different from anyone else. You're a killer. One day, you're just a guy, and then something happens, and you're a killer. Please go, please. Haven't you heard us enough? Sure, sure, I'll go. Why not? Won't make much difference now. Huh? Buddy, you know what I mean, don't you? You're just a guy. Yeah. Put your gun down. Maybe they'll give you a chance. Chance? <laughs> what chance? I've been waiting for a chance all my life. Give her the gun. It'll be better. We got it. Get out of the way, lady. I'm going out. Why don't you let me have your gun? Get back. Get way back. Jesse. It's all right, Henry. That's right. Stay there. I... Stay just like that. Okay, Jaleska. Hold it right there. Don't come any farther. Where's Johnny? In the other room. Way in back. There's six guns on you. You haven't got a chance. Drop that thing and come down with your hands over your head. Oh, no. We shouldn't have tried. Jesse. Yes? Why didn't it work? They shot at me. And then there was at least a half minute when he could have got out that door. Why didn't he? What made him wait? Don't talk, darling. It's all over now. What happened? Tell me. When the police fired at you, he started for the door. He was almost out. And then he stopped. He... He came back, Henry. They were still shooting. He went out onto the fire escape and lifted you into the room. Then he started for the door again, but... We could hear the police on the stairs. It was too late. Is your husband all right? I, I, I don't know. I think so. Will you get a doctor, please? I already sent for him. All right, take it easy, mister. You're going to be okay. Just lie easy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Hmm? Uh, not funny. Strange. Strange for a killer. Suspense. In which Dan O'Hurley starred in William N. Robeson's production of Strange for a Killer. Adapted by Anthony Ellis from a story by Robert Essen. Supporting Dan O'Hurley in Strange for a Killer were... Joan Banks, Jack Moyles, and Ted DeCorsia. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with The Last Kilometer by Michael Frost, a tense, action-packed story of the Rallye des Alpes, one of Europe's greatest sports car races. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.